Hello everyone, uh, I'm Richard Ferres from the ARDC. I'm going to talk to you about our community practice around trusted data repositories. Uh, you can see the link to the slides here so you can get access to all the links. Okay, what is trusted data repository? Well, if you think of the story a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away, uh, where a droid was asked to take a message from the princess to the knight. The message in this case is the trusted data we're trying to secure. The droid is the repository. The princess is the data depositor and the knight is the data user. A closer to home example is your home photos. Uh, a repository of all the images uh, you collected digitally, particularly if you've had children. And this intersects with NCRIS, which is the National Investment in Research Infrastructure and FAIR outputs, of which ARDC is a part. So obviously we want to secure our photos at home. So we uh, have processes to ensure they're secure, uh, including backup. So who are ARDC? ARDC through increased support high impact research through fair data, access to tools, new skills, and supporting that through communities. So some of the things we do include storage and compute, and data and platforms, here's an example. And we have people and policy, people to explain the services and solve problems and policy to drive the sector forward. So this is what we're going to talk about today. Why is trusted data important? What is trusted data? Who are called trust seal? What repositories are certified according to this and how is ARDC helping? And then lastly, should we, um, should our repository be, get a certification? So why is trusted data important? Basically comes down to the money that's going to be invested in data needs to be looked after uh, in places we can trust. So for instance, the EU report on turning fair into reality included a recommendation that data be deposited in trusted digital repositories. Uh, the Earth Sciences recently also in 2018 had a fair commitment statement data software are open, fair and curated and trusted domain repositories, of which 11 publishes 25 repositories and four institutions signed up to this commitment. And we see similar communities of practice around trusted data in the US, Canada, Japan, and the EU. What are the 16 requirements under the core trust seal? And we'll talk about who core trusts here are in a moment. So they come in three areas, organizational infrastructure, digital object management, and then technology. Um, so you can click on the requirements. We're gonna have a look at just one, the format of the requirements. So this is R15. So the high level requirement is in one sentence there in orange. Then there's guidance, which is about all up about a page. And then there's further explanation provided by Core Trust Seal. So there's a number of questions. Um, is the software inventory maintained in the system documentation available, for instance? And they have this idea of a designated community, that is that the repository supports a group of end users, both depositing and reusing. So what are some features of the certification? The idea is that 
uh, an application process provides links to public evidence of processes, policies, resources, and plans. There are 16 requirements and an applicant writes 500 day, 100 words per requirement pointing to evidence statements. This is assessed by a reviewer like a journal article and once approved, these applications become public. So you can see the five Australian uh, applications uh, that have been made public. Uh, there is an expectation that a repository will have continuous improvement. So not all controls have to be in place in the first instance, but uh, after three years when it expires, then we, Quartrasil expects those controls would be in place. So the certification in the last three years and then you have to recertify. Who are the Quartrasil? Trust Seal? Well, this is one of the outputs of the Research Data Alliance, which is a group building social and technical bridges to enable open sharing and reuse of data. It came from their group on the core trustworthy data repository requirements. So the Research Data Alliance has 63 organizational members and 11,000 researchers and research support people. And you can click on a link here to the adoption stories, including one that we linked to below. Who has been certified in Australia and who's going through the process? So these are the groups here. So AIDC paid for CSIRO, Australian Data Archive and the National Imaging Facility to work on applications. Uh, so you can go and have a look at the CSIRO and Australian Data Archive applications and most recently Paradisic, the Pacific Languages repository has now become certified. And we are currently working with the community to assist Australian Data Archive to recertify, but, and also a number of other organisations, the Institute of Marine Science, Geoscience Australia, the Marine Observation System, and IMAS, University of Tasmania, along with University of Western Australia. Uh, there are some other groups who are interested, but not yet drafting. And there's the potential for infrastructure providers such as Arnet, Figshare, NCI, you know, but Quartar Seal is still working out what the application should look like for those organisations. And why would you go ahead and doing it? This do the certification. This is what the Australian Data Archive said in their RDA adoption story. It allows your processes, policies, and procedures to be refined from a new perspective uh, from this outside standard uh, to garner trust from users and contributors uh, and to integrate data and deposit and reuse into life cycle and management plans. Should your repository be interested in core trust seal certification? Well, we'd say yes, if it's interested in supporting fair data. Some organizations signed up to the community because they're interested in enhancing their processes, particularly with writing specs for new software. Um, if you're interested in supporting your community of data depositors and reusers, particularly wanting to enhance the trustworthiness. If you're required by the COPDES commitment, particularly if you're supporting earth science data publication. If you're interested to uh, minimize the effort, then you're welcome to join the community of practice. Um, CSRA estimated it took them about 0.3 of an FTE, so about uh, four months of work, but a working draft can be completed in one week. And how how can you join the community? Well, you can just send me an email and then we can give you access to the working documents, uh, the regular meetings and the training workshops. Thank you very much, everyone.